Hello fellow overlanders and offroaders, another exciting series brought to you by 4x4 Golf, your go-to channel for anything 4x4, whether it be product reviews, car builds, tips and tricks, fun and exciting trips, and many more. The series will be dedicated to everything related to tires, as this is a crucial if not one of the most important components for a safe and enjoyable ride. Hi there. In this video, we're gonna cover four-wheel drive tire pressures. Now, tire pressures are pretty critical when you go off-road, and depending on the different terrain you navigate on, you will have to adjust the tire pressures to that respective terrain. The typical terrains we are talking about generally fall under one of these categories. Highway everyday use, outback gravel dirt roads, rocky muddy terrain, and soft sand, soft mud. There's also another important category which is no, but that has a completely different criteria and will require an explanatory video on its own. And typically we don't get snow in the Gulf region, uh, so we'll keep that for a completely different video to talk about it. So the benefits of reducing tire pressure is to actually increase the track or the length of the wheel, not necessarily the width, and that gives you more grip and more traction and less likely for the four wheel drive to dig into the ground or the track but also to reduce the likeliness of a puncture. Try to imagine with me a very inflated balloon and a very deflated balloon. You are more likely easier to burst the inflated balloon due to its tightness and rigidity of the texture. Now other than protecting your tires you also have the improved grip when you adjust your tire pressure according to the terrain. It also helps improve the tire life when you're going off-road as well as improve your fuel economy to a certain extent. Now we're not talking about miraculous fuel economy here but it does save you a few bucks on your fuel. Your average ride comfort is also improved and it also helps to reduce track damage. While there are major benefits, there is something that you need to take note of. Some of the consequences with lowering your tire pressure is that the actual bead of the tire can come off the rim or what is more commonly known in the offered community as a pop-out. So you have to reduce your speed and you have to avoid quick and sharp turns. And the other catch is if you go too low, the actual rim can spin inside the tire and therefore you don't go anywhere. Take a look at this short clip and imagine if that actually happens to you. When you reduce your tire pressures, remember to reduce your maximum speed. So for example, I typically run 40 PSI at highway, so the maximum speed of about 120 kilometers legally. Now, if I go down to 30 PSI, I reduce the tire pressure by 25%. So my speed should also be reduced by 25%. So instead of 100, 120 kilometers looking, we're looking at about 85 to 90 kilometers an hour now. And again, just be mindful, whatever pressure you reduce, that percentage you should also reduce in your speed. Now every vehicle is different depending on weights and depending on the tire that you have on your car and its construction. And now we're going to look at some, some common pressures and see how it impacts on the footprint of the wheel. So to start off with running 40 PSI, which is your typical highway pressure, we're gonna reduce it down to 30 and see what impact that has on the track. So now we're at 30 PSI, and as you can tell by the video, the actual track or the length of the rubber has increased. So typical highway pressure is between 30 and 40 PSI, depending on the tire and depending on the vehicle. Let's now go down to 20 and see what that will look like. So now we've reduced it down to about 20 PSI and you can see the tire is actually bulging a little, but it's also increasing track or length again so in terrain like this 
I typically run the tire pressures between 30 and 20 psi halfway, about 25 psi is usually a good start. And if you need any more, just reduce it down as you go. So that's 20 now. Let's go down to 15 and have a look at that. So now we're at about 15 psi and you can see the increasing track that that extra 5 psi we've let out has made. Every psi will make a significant increase in traction and difference of the tire now between 15 and 20 psi is a good pressure for mud or sand. Typically for sand, I'd run about 18 psi and if I think I need more grip, I reduce it down further. Let's go down now to 10 psi and see what that looks like. So now we're down to 10 psi and again you can also see that increase in track or the length of the actual wheel. Now a pressure like this is more like an emergency pressure when you're somewhere on the beach or when you're on soft sand and you typically want to run between 10 and 15 as an emergency pressure. But if need be, you can run as low as 8, but you also run that risk of the tire coming off the rim. So it's more just to highlight now in this video what it does look like and the increase in track. So we're going to go down to 5 psi as our last pressure and we'll see what that looks like. So now we're at about 5 or 6 psi and you'll notice that the pressure isn't even registering. So this is more like an emergency pressure as mentioned before when you're on the beach and, or you're covering your car. And very important you need to remember that you need to keep your wheels dead straight when you're running pressure like this. You can see as well that there's quite a bit of a bulge in the track width that also makes it susceptible to sharp rocks hitting it and puncturing it. So you'd want to have a good and strong tire like this uh, on these trucks and make sure that you try and avoid any punctures. Now, it's important when you're deflating your tires, depending on the terrain, you've also got a means to pump them back up. So I would highly recommend you get yourself a good quality air compressor to do the job. And I have used one of these two compressors you can see in the video above. I would highly recommend it. They're very good quality, they're very durable, and they inflate a lot of cars before they overheat and turn off. Let's we inflate back our tires back to the 40 psi so we can hit the road back again and we'll see you shortly. To recap what we have covered in this video, these are my general recommendations for different terrains, generally applicable to most mud terrain and all terrain tires. Between 30 and 40 psi is where you would run your typical daily drive highway road. Pressures between 25 and 30 psi is your gravel and dirt roads. 20 to 25 psi is your rocky and your medium to hard muddy terrain. Between 15 and 20 psi is your sand dune area. And between 15 and 10 psi is your soft sand beachy areas and soft mud terrain. And anything below 10, between 5 and 10 psi is your emergency pressures for recovery. I hope you found this video informative. Don't forget to like this video, hit that bell and subscribe icon our YouTube channel so we can keep bringing you more and more entertaining and informative videos such as this. Thank you for watching and hope to see you soon.